For staying with us on Consider This, Melissa and Sharad here with you. We're chatting tonight to Kira Yusri and Tharma Pillay, co-founders of Undi18. Tharma, I interrupted you just before the break. No Do you want to finish your thought about whether you think uh, Perikatan National will have a lot of youth representation? Um, so for us, we always try to be uh, as neutral as possible uh, in, or as impartial when it comes to politics. So we want to try to promote youth empowerment and youth representation. So we did ask for Perikatan National to consider bringing more young people into positions of power to represent the demographics of Malaysia. So we do hope that they seriously consider that because I think that's something that's so important, especially when you look at representing Malaysia as a whole. Sure. Yeah. I do want to ask you, though, you know, there's mm -hmm. also this kind of kind of uh, off-the-cuff kind of statement that says, well, you know, what we need to do is get rid of the older folk, that all, <laughs> that generation, they're, they're pointless, yeah. uh, and if we, if we were led by younger people, all our problems would be solved. <laughs> do you think that's true? I mean, will our, all our problems be solved? Because you guys we are just... new problems. <laughs> Fair. Younger problems. Fair. <laughs> you think so? I mean, really, honestly, yeah. Yeah. What, what do you make of that idea, the idea that somehow yeah. young people are purer, more yeah. uh, honest, and so on and so forth. I think uh, where that, that, I guess, that idea comes from is that I think people have the idea that young people are a lot more optimistic, we're a lot more hopeful, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, so that I, I guess when it comes to dealing with crisis, dealing with challenges like this, uh, that's what uh, people want to see, right? Okay, let's just change the old guard out and put young people in and that will solve all the problems. I personally think there's value in diversity. And when we talk about diversity, it's not about replacing everyone. It's taking in everyone's considerations and perspectives. Mm. Yeah. What I particularly like is that, you know, after what's happened with the political crisis, yeah. what Undi18 has done has just doubled down on <laughs> its uh, advocacy right. work yeah. rather than, you know, despair and lose yeah. hope and become disappointed and feel powerless. Yeah. You've decided to, okay, we're just going to... You know, be more, have, take up more yeah. initiatives, yeah. and some of the initiatives under Undi 18 include. You know, if you, you've got a few that you've yes. launched yes, in the past right. week or so. The 111 initiative, yeah. which is, I have to say, quite interesting, a youth campaign to build towards 50% women's representation in parliament yeah. and in politics. Yeah. Uh, tell us more about that. Yeah. So the 111 initiative. Uh, so we have 222 members of parliament within our day one right yet. So why is it such a crazy idea to have it 50% women? We have about 50% women in the Malaysian population. Uh, I know the Pakatan Harapan said 30%. Yeah, as you've gone beyond this. Uh, as a goal. <laughs> but I think for us is that, why not? Right? The question is always, why not? And it's, for us, it's also not just about starting a conversation. It's about tackling, at its roots cause, uh, uh, tackling the problem at its root as well. So talking about political culture, patronage politics, uh, you know, we hope to build, uh, do capacity building workshops with women to tackle election funding, uh, you know, uh, 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 social stigmas and also even uh, hoping to get women politicians to do mentoring sessions with women who are interested to venture into this field. I do want to ask you, Tama, look, yeah. you know, there's the uh, 111 initiative, the Undi Saksam mm -hmm. initiative, the Mai Hutan initiative, the Senate 18 yes, initiative. Right. All of them seem to be focused on a legislative reform yes. or something of that order. Uh, I don't see anything, uh, at least on paper now, that uh, addresses some of, the, uh, some of the core concerns that are <coughs> Politicians always talk about, they say, uh, young people are co concerned about jobs, they're yeah. concerned about wages, mm -hmm. they're concerned about, uh, you know, the, the, the future of the world, as it were. Why is that not one of your initiatives? Why are they not f uh, based on problems that young people are facing? Uh, student uh, debt. Uh, yeah, um, so I think uh, to solve those problems is to identify the, 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 core, uh, the core matter. And for us, the problem that we've identified is the lack of representation. Uh, because the interests of different generations are very different. Uh, this is the reality. So... If we can ensure that younger voices are more empowered. So, for example, Undi Saksama is a discussion about gerrymandering, malapportionment, and also alternative vote systems. And if you look at state uh, statistics and data, you look at the most urban areas and most highly dense constituencies are young constituencies, mm -hmm. which means that when we lower the voting age and we have automatic voter registrations, we are further disenfranch disenfranchising them um, in a way. Right? Uh, so, for example, Sabak Burnham has about 40,000 age voters. Uh, Damansara has 160,000, 180,000 voters. Um, yeah, so, so I think, I, I think that's, uh, that's something that, that we have to deal with. So, systemic change enables this problem to be solved. Okay, so what are the big wins again? Uh, Undi 18, Loring Day, not been gazetted. Not yet. Is yeah. that a concern? No. If this government chooses to delay the gazetting, yeah. 
how are you going to respond? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, we will be very pissed off about it because uh, <laughs> the reality is that this was a bipartisan uh, bill. It yeah. was the first time in history that we had 100% votes yeah. in parliament, 100% votes in uh, the Dewan Negara. So it has to be something that was agreed upon by all sides. So yeah. for them to change, uh, change the deal and say, okay, we're yeah. going to postpone it. I think a lot of very pissed gonna, off yeah. young people. Yeah. But, okay, yeah. but do you think it's then less likely because yeah. precisely From because what of I understand, it is very difficult to backtrack on it because it yeah. has been uh, amended already. Yes. The constitution right. has yes. been amended. Yes. Yes. I think the question is just when it will be gazetted yes. and will there be delays to its gazetment. Yeah. Uh, so, so far, the Election Commission has not said anything in regards to its progress. Mm -hmm. So, I'm feeling pretty hopeful. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I'm young. Because it's, it's but that's, that's, yeah. the, that's the beauty yeah. of being young. You still have yeah, that. Yeah, but from what I understand, it is almost very difficult to, and there's no precedence to, okay. um, to reversing a decision well, like that. Speaking about Undi 18, what yeah. did you guys learn from the successes of Undi yeah. 18 that you feel that you can apply to the mm -hmm. initiatives under the, the new initiatives that you've announced to make sure that it achieves the same types of results? Uh, so for us, we always believe that being hyper focused in our advocacy because when you have a focused cause it means you can build a broad coalition so for example if let's say i had a whole list 30 list of demands then more and more people might disagree with one of those demands or yeah. two of those demands so the number of people who, who actually support this will be less and less and less but if you're focusing on one particular focused agenda it means whether you're liberal whether you're conservative whether you're malay chinese indian you can get on uh, get on board yeah. and support this, uh, this agenda so i think that's something that's so important when we push for ideas you got to make sure that it's bipartisan. It covers as many people behind you as possible. Mm. Mm. Kira, I mean, you know, in the last um, few minutes that we have, yeah. what do you think, low-hanging fruit, with this particular government? We know cabinet has been announced and so on and so forth, as you mentioned earlier. What would you like this government to do to signal that they're on board with the kind of uh, initiatives that you both have been working on? What would uh, you like them to say to you? I think two things, right? Electing, putting the right people into a cabinet, putting yeah. uh, efficient people and representative people. And secondly, don't stop the reforms that uh, Malaysians want. It's very, yeah. So. Do both of you have a wish list of who you'd like to see in terms <laughs> of the Minister of Youth and Sports? Oh, oh. No, that, oh that's, that's a tough one. Uh, uh, I, I hope you see know. a woman. Yeah. Oh, I think it'll be very interesting, especially I think with the previous administration, there was a lot of focus into uh, women in sports and girls' sports. So I think. Uh, and we've never had that before, yeah. so why not? Yeah. All right. Why not indeed? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you so much, Thank you. guys, for being on the show tonight. That's all the time we have on Consider This. I'm Melissa Idris with me, Sharad Kutan, signing off for tonight. We'll see you tomorrow night, same time, another episode. Thank you for watching and good night. Thank you.